Hey, welcome back. I want to talk about sign-in risk-based conditional access. Now, this capability allows you to look at a user's sign-in behavior as they sign into an app, and if there's anything suspicious about that behavior, like maybe they're coming from an anonymous IP address or impossible travel or a number of different risk events, then go ahead and block that access. And so this capability is part of Identity Protection, which is in Azure Active Directory Premium Plan 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in a demo. To demo this, I'm going to use the Tor browser, which allows me to anonymize my IP address, route my traffic through another country, which could then kick off impossible travel and other location-based uh, risk events. So let's go ahead and sign into portal.office.com and we should see it get blocked when I try to authenticate. And we'll let that authenticate. And in just a moment, it should detect that my sign-in traffic is risky. And boom, stopped my tracks. Your sign-in was successful, but does not meet the criteria to access this resource. For example, you might be signing from a browser, app, or location that is restricted by your admin. So risk-based conditional access did its job. So now let me show you how to set this up. Okay, so within the Azure Active Directory admin portal, I'm going to click on security, and then I have two options here. I could use conditional access to do this, or I can use identity protection. That's kind of your preference. I like conditional access personally, but let me show you identity protection. So if I come in here and choose sign-in risk policy, I'll talk about user policy in another video, but sign-in risk policy, I basically scope it to the users. I have it scoped to all users, right? And then my sign-in risk is low and above, and I'll explain more of these in just a moment. And then my controls is block access as opposed to maybe requiring MFA. And so I just can just turn that on and boom, I'm ready to rock and roll. Now I like using conditional access because it's a little bit more flexible. Let me show you what I mean. I can specifically choose who I want to apply this to. I can choose which apps I want to apply this to. So I have it applied to my G Suite tenant, uh, Box, Dropbox, Office 365, and a few other apps. And then my conditions here, there's my sign-in risk. I'll come back to that. And then my grant access is to block it. Now, the conditions, let me explain what's happening here on sign-in risk. So Microsoft, for obvious reasons, does not disclose what is high, medium, and low. And that's for obviously security purposes. However, from their documentation, they describe that a high threshold reduces the number of times a policy is triggered and minimizes the impact to users. However, it does exclude medium and low detections from the policy, which may not block an attacker. So if this was production, I mean, you're going to have to kind of weigh the pros and cons here. If you choose low, it's going to try to block everything, uh, but it's, it may have a further impact on a user, whereas if you choose high, it's going to minimize that impact and block um, those high-risk events. For my purposes of the demo, I'm going to choose high. And, and I'm not going to save it here because it's already saved, and I've turned it on. At that point, I'm ready to rock and roll. It's basically completed. So now let me show you what all of the different risk detections are for sign-in risk. I will put a link in the video description to the documentation here, but on this documentation site, if we scroll through this, it describes user risk, which we'll cover in another video, and then it jumps into sign-in risk. So sign-in risk is defined by a sign-in risk represents the probability that a given authentication request isn't authorized by the identity owner. These risks can be calculated in real time or calculated offline using Microsoft's internal and external threat intelligence sources, including security researchers, law enforcement, professionals, security teams at Microsoft, and other trusted sources. And then you have all the different risk detections. So anonymous IP address, like a Tor browser or anonymous VPN client, a typical travel where there's uh, identifying two different sign-ins originating from uh, geographically distant locations. Um, malware linked IP address, like a, like a botnet, as an example. Unfamiliar sign-in properties, that's an interesting one. Admin confirmed user compromised, malicious IP address, suspicious inbox manipulation rules, password spray, impossible travel, new country, activity from anonymous IP address, and suspicious inbox forwarding. 
Now, some of these are from Microsoft Cloud App Security, which I'll cover that in another video. Others are built right into Azure Active Directory Premium Plan too. So this is the different types of sign-in risk detections that you're gonna to wanna to be familiar with. All right, well, as you can see, there's not much to this. It's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you understand what are the risks that this thing is detecting, and then understand those thresholds, low, medium, and high, and you'll be good to go. Reference the documentation, and then just make sure you can understand the use cases around this. So remember, this can block a Tor browser, such as uh, anonymous IP address or anonymous VPN client, and possible travel, a number of different things. All right, folks. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. Whoa, hold on a second. Don't leave yet. If you found value in this video, click on like because it really helps me out. And if you want to see more videos, click on subscribe because I have new content being released on a daily basis across security compliance from Azure to Microsoft 365 and much more.